Hello and welcome to the course TensorFlow Hub, Deep Learning, Computer Vision, and Natural Language Processing. My name is Jones Granatier, and I will teach all the lectures of the course. As the name suggests, the focus of the course is on using the TensorFlow library in machine learning projects. However, a repository called TensorFlow Hub will be used which has hundreds of pre-trained and ready-to-use machine learning models. It is possible to develop complex applications without training neural networks from scratch and mainly by programming few lines of code. Now I'm going to show you the contents that will be covered, which is divided into two parts. In part number one, we will explore computer vision projects. The first one is image classification. As you can see here, all implementations will be done using Google Colab online, so you don't need to worry about installing the libraries on your own machine. It will be very easy to follow the lectures. You can see here the table of the contents that will be implemented step by step. You can take a look at the code. We will discuss each line of code. In this first case study, we are going to use a flowers dataset. The goal is to send to the neural network the image of flowers and it will be able to classify the category. For example, this is an image of roses. We will send it to the neural network and we will get here the prediction roses. There are five different species of flowers in this dataset. The next project is object detection. We will send an image to the neural network and it will be able to detect more than 80 different objects. As you can see here, person, backpack, traffic light, cars, and so on. And the good point about using TensorFlow Hub is that it is necessary to implement just a few lines of code to get the results. The third case study is style transfer. It is one of the most interesting applications on computer vision. There are two images, the content image and the style image. And as you can see the result here, the goal is to transfer the style of the style image to the content image. We can still see the basic parts of the content image but it has been stylish. Again, few lines of code are required to apply this technique. Basically, we need to send the content image and the style image to get the result. The next project is GANs Generative Adversarial Networks. You can see here the original image and we are going to send to the neural network the masked image. Note that the right part of the image is hidden, and the goal of the GAN is to extend or complete the image. As you can see here, see that the details about the sunlight were correctly completed, and also some details here about the mountain and the ice. The last project about computer vision is action recognition. The goal is to send any video to the neural network and it will predict the actions. And what is interesting about this case study is that it might have more than one action in the video. We can see here the main action, making pizza, with a probability of 36%. And 
and there are some other actions that may be identified. The good point about this TensorFlow model is that more than one different action can be recognized. Then, we will move on to part number two, where we are going to implement projects about natural language processing. The first one is one of the most common, which is text classification. We will use an IMDB dataset that is a website with a lot of movie reviews. The goal is to send the reviews to the neural network and it will be able to predict if it is positive or if it is negative. During this case study, we will train a neural network. You will also learn about word embedding, how to transform from string to numbers. This is the way neural networks can process the data. At the end, we will get the predictions, we will send some reviews to the neural network, and it will return the predictions, if it is positive or if it is negative. The next case study is about similarity search. We will apply information retrieval. We are going to use this QUAD dataset, which is a question and answer dataset. At the end, we will create an index to store the information, and then we will get a random question from Squad and find the most similar documents. For example, this is a question we extracted from the dataset about pharmacies. You can see a list with 10 possible answers. These answers were extracted by similarity from the dataset. It is an example about how to retrieve information from texts. Finally, the last case study is audio classification. I will play this audio. It is the sound of a cat. We will send it to the neural network and it will be able to predict the main sound, for example, animal, and also it is possible to get the top n sounds. In this example, the top 10 sounds, animal, domestic animals, pets, cats, and so on. The good point about this model is that it can predict many sounds in the same audio. For example, if there is a cat, a dog, a car, and so on, all these categories will be returned. At the end of the course, there are two additional contents, the intuition about artificial neural networks, and also the intuition about convolutional neural networks. In case you don't know these topics, I recommend that you start the course by watching these lectures, since all these projects are based on neural networks. Of course, as I said before, few lines of code are necessary for most of the projects, so you can even follow the course easily without knowing these concepts in detail. Regarding prerequisites, the first one is programming logic, basic Python programming, and knowledge about machine learning, neural networks, and TensorFlow are desirables. Of course, it is not an obligation. If you don't know these concepts in detail, you can still follow in the course. We hope you have a great course and that you have a lot of ideas on how to use TensorFlow's Hub's pre-trained models in your own projects. See you in the next lecture.